How do you repot the Monstera Deliciosa? That's the project today. I'm gonna make it super simple and worry-free for you. Stick around. I'm Tanner the Planter, and this is the truth about houseplants. One of the first things you wanna do whenever you're repotting your plant, of course, is to get it out of the pot that it's in. It can get stuck a little bit as the roots sort of climb onto the pot so it can get a little bit sticky. So all you have to do is massage the sides of the pot and we give it a really good, mm, you really have to get in there and hopefully, mm, isn't that nice? Take a look at those roots, by the way, also. I could tell this was gonna be a super dense root ball because it was very uh, firm on the outside as well. So this is looking tremendous. Whenever you have the white roots right here, that's a great sign of health, okay? If you, these roots were mushy or papery thin or if they were anything but firm when you squeeze them like that, that's a sign that you have root rot. That's a whole nother video. I have lots of information on that, but we've got a nice healthy root ball here. So we can go on to the next step. How do you determine what size of pot your plant should go into? Okay, so remember this was the pot size that we went into, okay? This is a, or this is the pot size we're coming from rather. This is a six inch pot. And I'm actually gonna go up to just one size larger. This is a little over a seven inch pot, maybe a seven and a half. But you can see there's not a whole lot of extra room right here. I want you to imagine right now actually, that all the negative space, everything you see right here, is gonna be extra soil for those roots to climb into. One of the biggest houseplant mistakes I see as we go into winter months is repotting your plants in too large of a pot. Now, the reason I say this is one of the biggest mistakes is, let's bring this uh, example back out here again. Overwatering, root rot, that's just root suffocation. And that happens when the oxygen supply around the root ball is not uh, restored in a timely manner, okay? So one of the things that gets your uh, oxygen to be restored in your soil is light. Light is what processes a lot of that water and restores the oxygen supply around the roots. So, long story short, if we're in the winter months that typically have shorter days and gloomier days, that's gonna make the soil stay wetter longer. The longer your soil stays wet, the longer the oxygen supply in your soil is low, the increased risk you have of root rot. So by only going up a small amount each time you repot, you're gonna drastically reduce the chances you have of getting root rot, of overwatering. So that's why I always recommend with your house plants, just go up one to two inches larger than the diameter of the root ball. So I've got my pot right here. Now it's time to do a little bit of soil selection, okay? I kind of cheated. I pre-mixed a little bit right here, but I'm gonna share with you guys what all is in my Monstera Deliciosa mix. Starting off, we have peat moss. Peat moss is gonna retain a little bit of moisture, um, but it's not gonna be so, so bad, right? It's kind of like our base. If you wanna think about it like cooking, it's kind of like your flour. And then we're gonna add some ingredients to make it a little bit more appropriate for our Monstera Deliciosa. You can see right here, we've got a bunch of perlite in there as well. And then we also have, uh, the little brown bits are orchid bark, okay? So it's a uh, equal parts of peat moss, perlite, and orchid bark. Super, super simple. Now, something that uh, I want you guys to keep in mind when you're making your own soil mixtures is to mix them up really, really well. The magic of these chunkier soils or of having these different soil ingredients, the, the peat moss, the perlite, and the orchid bark, is that they're all different particle sizes. They're all different shapes. They're all organic shapes. And so they're not going to fit really, really well like this. Instead, they're gonna kind of clash together, being that they are different sizes and that they are not uniform, they're organic shapes. And what that is gonna do is that's going to allow more oxygen around your roots. That's the real secret behind a chunky soil mixture and why it's so good for your houseplants is simply because just like going up one pot size, it's also going to decrease your chances of root rot with your houseplants. So make sure you mix and combine the ingredients really, really well. And if you're doing this inside, <clears throat> uh, do as I say, not as I do, and use the face mask. Probably giving myself some gardener's lung or something over here. Can you see this haze? I need to like squirt this down or something. Is this alcohol or water? It's water. I gotta do this to keep the dust down. This is crazy in here. Do this outside if you can. If the weather is appropriate, do it outside. Now that we've got everything mixed up, look how nice that is. Nice and chunky, different soil ingredients. It's absolutely beautiful. Gonna be a great mixture for your Monstera. If you notice the little yellow balls in there, that's slow release fertilizer, by the way. Also a really good easy hack 
if you are a forgetful fertilizer like I am. Okay, grab our new pot. We've got our new pot. Now, one of the things uh, that people always struggle with with their plants is when they put soil in here for the first time, what happens? It falls out. Did you see all that soil falling out? Yeah, it can be a little bit messy, right? So something that I like to do, I like to put a little cocoa fiber in the bottom of my pot. This is going to help uh, contain the soil particles so they don't fall out of our drainage holes right here, but it's not going to impede the drainage just to prove my point. Watch how fast this drains through. It just goes right through. All right, so you don't have to worry about it holding onto any water. That's not an issue. We're just trying to hold the soil in there. Uh, people also use coffee filters, things like that as well. Um, coffee filters are fine to use if you want to, but I prefer to use this. And you don't need to go too crazy with it. I'm just putting a very thin layer on the bottom right here. And now look when we put our very first, and now look what happens when we put our very first uh, layer on there. Oh, I missed a hole. I would have proved myself wrong right there. You guys would have flamed me. Okay, there we go. There won't be as much now. So look, see, a little bit fell out, but you get the point. Okay, so the goal, as far as the height goes with your plants, you know, I just put a little bit of soil at the bottom right here. So your goal is you want the overall soil level of your plant to really only reach about right here. You want about a half inch below the total rim of the pot. If I fill up the soil all the way to the edge of the pot, the very, very top, then when I go to water, the water is just going to run off the sides. It's just gonna spill off the sides. It's gonna be a big mess. So by only filling up the soil to right about a half inch below the total rim of the pot, when you go to water, that water is gonna pool up and it's gonna seep in instead of just running right off. So that's the overall goal. And so this is important for this next step, which I'm about to show you, and that's we're going to actually place our plant in there. So I'm going to test this first. Oh man, I've still got it. I'm gonna tell you guys what, it's been, a little while since I repotted a plant, so I wasn't sure if I lost my magic or not. But I didn't. Oh, sorry. I uh, jumped the gun there for a minute. Uh, but I got it right on the first time. So guess and check. Make sure that the total rim of your pot, uh, or the total uh, height of your uh, plant, which is going to be this right here, uh, reaches about a half inch from the total rim of the pot. Okay? That's just a little bit of a recap. Now let's set it in there. We are also going to make sure that it's nice and centered. That's a totally a personal preference, not something that you have to do, right? But it is make it look nice. Um, you know what I'm gonna do also, just because this is so tightly root bound, I want my new roots to really grab into that soil as soon as possible instead of continuing to swirl around. So I'm going to, I just ripped off this fingernail right here, so it's kind of sensitive. So maybe, I don't know, can I do it with my other hand? It's so hard. I might need a, a tool. Let me see here. How about my Tanner the Planter chopstick? Yes. Oh, that was a bad tool for this job. Don't use your Tanner the Planter chopstick for this. Use definitely something else. Okay, um, whoever grew this, that's a serious root ball you have going on right there. Ah, we're doing better here. Okay, don't be worried. Everyone's like, oh, you're breaking all the roots. It's fine. Little root breakage, you know, stimulates some nice little root growth. Um, it'll it'll recover in no time. You can also kind of score the sides a little bit because again, remember, we're gonna have extra soil around the sides as well. So we want them to be able to climb in. You don't have to do this. I've just personally found that it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit better. But if you don't want to do this step, perfectly fine to skip it. Not a big deal. Uh, if the owner is watching this video, again, it's perfectly fine, I promise been doing it for years. Okay, now that we've got the roots roughed up a little bit, now let's put them in here. Okay, so again, we're gonna settle them up, or center them up, rather. And then all we have left to do, really, is backfill. So I'm just getting my soil in there, making sure to get into all the little nooks and crannies. You can use your hand, shove it down in there, twist them around, rotate. Woo! I'm working up a sweat on this big mama. She is a large one. Okay, but you guys know what the classic thing is whenever I'm repotting plants, I like to be very gentle with them. 
Just kidding. We're slapping pots around here today. We want to get that soil settled in around the root system so that all the roots are getting water and uh, nutrients, all the good things that our soil is going to be providing. And slapping the pot is a really good, easy way to do that. It's kind of fun. Your family's definitely gonna make fun of you though. Now I know what you're typing in the comments right now. Tanner, what about all of these aerial roots? What do you do with the aerial roots? When you have aerial roots growing like this on your plant, there's a couple of things you can do. There's no right or wrong answer, really. I'm just gonna give you the information and you can choose to do with it whatever you want. Okay, so for these roots in particular, for this Monstera Deliciosa, in nature, this plant uses these roots to climb structures, trees usually, and it climbs up those trees to compete for light. So it's climbing up the canopy, trying to get brighter light because at the base of the forest floor, quite low light, but if it climbs up, it can get nice bright light and get really big, okay? And it also, these also will get water and nutrients out of the air, or if they're in the soil, they can also get nutrients from the soil. So there's a few things you can do. Step one, this is my personal preference. I like to actually tuck them back into the soil because the more roots that your houseplant has, gathering water and nutrients, in my opinion, the better. Now, if you want to cut them off, you can, you can cut them off if you really, really want to. I disagree with that. I don't think it's a very great thing to do because it spent so much time and energy on doing it. But if you're gonna do it, if you wanna do it, go for it. The plant is not going to die. What I will say is maybe don't cut them all off at once. Maybe just cut off a few of them at a time, let the plant recover a little bit, cut off a few more, et cetera, et cetera. Or of course you can just let them free. I actually like the wild look of the plant just as it is. So those are the three options you have. You can do whatever you want. Now that you've got your house plant, it's nice and tucked away. The only thing we really have left to do is water it in. Now I'm gonna let the customer do this part. I'm gonna let her water it in when they come and get it so they're not going around with a big old mess. But yeah, right after, even if you are curing, or even if you're treating for root rot, if it's a regular repot, whatever the case may be, go ahead and immediately water your plant in. That's gonna further settle in the soil around your roots and get your plant uh, immediately starting uh, into its new environment on a good leg. You don't want them to, all the roots to be dehydrated, right? So there you have it. That is how you repot the Monstera Deliciosa. Can you see how much I'm sweating? I swear it's not a hard job. I'm just, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm in a small space with 300 plants or something. I don't know, but there you go. Uh, thank you for guys for watching. Oh, what was that? Oh, the Monstera wants you to remind you to also like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.